Man, these graphics are nuts! Yeah, they got more flavor than a pistachio. No doubt. I'll whoop you head to head. What? Squirrel, please. You have about as much skills as a chipmunk. Yo, mama's a chipmunk. Oh, no. He got denied just like you get denied by the lady. Shoot, if I had a shit like that, the girls would be all over me like salt on a peanut. Hells yeah. Hells yeah. DSP. Hells yeah. Oh, the PSP, the little handheld that could, boasting the title of Most Powerful Gaming Handheld. At the time, it lived a long and healthy 10 years, selling in excess of 80 million units and releasing in a variety of shapes and sizes. Here are a few of mine, and uh, let me just quickly check, and the battery miraculously hasn't exploded yet. Can't be harming those UMDs or Pro Memory Stick duos, eh? Where, where does this... There it is, I found it. Sony certainly loves their proprietary hardware, and the PSP was no exception. It ran what were essentially mini-discs in a plastic bomber jacket, and the internal storage was ridiculously overpriced. Still, you could watch films on it. I got Donnie Darko with my pre-order, and it scarred me for weeks. In spite of that, the PSP was extremely successful, and my favourite thing it let you play was PS1 classics, allowing you to download digital versions of some of the PS1's very best games. My much-spurned PSP Go, the digital version of the PSP, became a haven for Final Fantasy, Crash Team Racing, and Metal Gear Solid. But today, we'll be looking at the 2005 US PSP launch lineup. Now, as some of you may be able to tell, this isn't the launch lineup here, and we will be emulating today. I hope you can forgive me. It turns out buying all these games is quite expensive, and also I have no idea how to actually capture footage from these, so I suppose we'll just have to work it out as we go. Are you ready? Then let's do this. Who let the apes out? This spooky boy, apparently. Our very first PSP launch title is Ape Escape on the Loose, a remake of the original PS1 Ape Escape game from 1999. It's colourful, it's simple, and it's almost impossible to see where you're going. Yeah, you can tap the L button to recenter your camera, but if you're coming from the original game and looking to actually look, then this could be a real sticking point. Also, I have no idea where this T-Rex just went. Ultimately, though, there's literally no other game in the PSP launch lineup that lets you smack sentient simians with a lightsaber and trap them in a net, so I think we're all in agreement that makes this game extremely important. 66% on Metacritic for this guy, with many reviewers lamenting the lack of a second analog stick. Oh well. I am absolutely no good at fighting games, and I'm certainly not good at Japan-exclusive Dreamcast fighting games. But that's where Darkstalkers Chronicle The Chaos Tower comes in. A port of Vampire Chronicles for matching service, the game allows you to choose a fighting style from all five of the Darkstalkers and Vampire arcade games, and features a load of goodies to go with it, including some truly fascinating characters. I picked Not Little Red Riding Hood first, and she brings the kind of chaotic energy I can respect. I then assembled the best team I could muster to tackle some kind of chaos tower. You like jazz? I must say that I particularly enjoyed the wonkily translated win quips, allowing us to transition seamlessly from the innocuous to uh, this. I really quite liked it though, as did critics, who awarded it 74% on Metacritic, with GameSpot calling it probably the best portable fighting game ever made. High praise indeed. Oh, yeah. yeah, here we go. We've had a remake and a port so far in this launch lineup, but in spite of the simple name, Dynasty Warriors is neither. Instead, a bespoke DW title for the PSP in which you can die nasty. But you're not killing people. Don't worry about your precious ethical standards, you're just knocking them out, I think. 
Everybody loves whacking endless waves of unmoving enemies and unleashing ridiculous special attacks that let you whack endless waves of unmoving enemies even harder, right? I mean, it's pretty mindless and simplistic when boiled down, but I'd be lying if I said there wasn't something compelling about it all, even if you spend half your time in the PSP version running into dense fog hoping to find someone to hit. That's probably why it ended up with just 62% on Metacritic, but I had fun, so there. Oh yeah, here we go, sports time! I've played a hockey game before. He's massive, he looks like a Pokemon. But I've never watched hockey, so I'm going to give this everything I've got. Gretzky NHL has a lot more sharp edges than my previous NHL 2K experience on PS3, but hell, even I couldn't resist getting caught up in all the excitement as the crowd was truly going bonkers for honkers. That's what we hockey fans call hockey. I honestly found this game quite hard to play. It was fast, yes, but the physics engine just sort of did its own thing and the opposing team had this habit of forgetting to play when they weren't rendered on screen. Not even the appearance of Clint Eastwood could get me through this one. 65% on Metacritic. Oh boy, it's a puzzle game. Developed specifically for the PSP, the Lumine series, or Luminaires if you want to get serious about this, has been going for over a decade now, with the last game released on multiple platforms in 2018. Basically, you have to guide a square of four coloured tiles down a grid, matching the colours to make the tiles disappear. There's a vertical line that sweeps across the stage, clearing any matched tiles and rewarding you appropriately if you manage to clear more than one set per vertical sweep. I'm not much of a puzzle boy, so it didn't really offer me anything substantial, instead looking more like Tetris with a cocaine habit, but critics adored the game, awarding it a lofty 89% on Metacritic. High praise indeed. Oh, and the music's really good, but for copyright reasons I can't play you any, so here's popular singer-songwriter Nicki Minaj overlaid for your appreciation. Metal Gear Acid very much feels like Hideo Kojima and co testing the waters to see what the PSP was capable of. It certainly looks like a Metal Gear game, and the story features the usual fixation on US politics and unintelligible acronyms like Beagle, HRT, and Chain, but something's missing. Maybe it's that it's an obscure card game where you take turns moving a solid snake avatar around a map. Perhaps it's the complete lack of voice acting. Or maybe it's the bizarre and tedious visual novel approach to character dialogue. It has creepy doll children and a psychic special ops member, though. Par for the course for a Kojima game, I suppose. It earned 75% on Metacritic for its efforts, and while I'm sure there's a Metal Gear story worth experiencing, I'm just glad Metal Gear Acid did the legwork for the infinitely better MGS Peace Walker in 2010. Maybe I'm just salty I spent too long on the main menu before working out Circle was go and Cross was back! Oh yeah, here we go, sports time! I've played a basketball game before. Jason Terry is my arch rival, but I've never watched basketball, so I'm going to give this everything I've got. What struck me about this sports game is just how minimal it is. No frills, no bells and whistles, just here is your basketball game, stupid, play it and do the mad dunks. My boys the 69ers are back in action, and to my absolute shock I was dunking and shooting all over the shop. Probably helps that defending is apparently impossible in this game, but there we are. That goes both ways though. Just kick him! I then tried my hand at a mini game, but got distracted when I discovered you could run around without a ball. I tried to have a conversation with my dad, and I also attempted to go and get a hot dog. 57% on Metacritic, and that's probably because you can't leave the arena, but then again, I don't want PSP Jerry Welsh escaping the confines of the game and coming to get me, so every cloud. Oh, yeah. Need for Speed Underground 2 is cemented highly in series fans' memories as one of the better NFS games. It stands to reason, then, that the PSP port, Need for Speed Underground Rivals, is also good. Well, yes and no. I jumped into a proper race with a proper car to begin with. Game first. <laughs> Naturally. Eat your heart out, The Rock! I then bought my first car. The pickings were slim, so I chose the car my driving instructor had. Better safe than sorry, after all. Oh, Jesus Christ! I made the necessary changes to go as fast as possible, that being putting on a spoiler, and repped the triple jump colours before starting my naughty crime racing career. It went... 
all right. For a PSP game, it's really pretty, but it lacks a lot of the story elements and polish from the PS2 original, and achieved 74% on Metacritic. Oh yeah, here we go, sports time! I've played an American football game before. At least I left with my dignity. But I've never watched American football, so I'm going to give this everything I've got. God, this game is hideous, but hey, that's just the intro cutscene. Even in an emulator, it's all compressed. Oh my god, what is that? I picked my boys the 69ers again, even though I really wanted to play as Team Exhibit. Also, thank you. NFL Street 2 Unleashed for the positive reinforcement. I typed my name correctly, and I was rewarded with a treat. Lovely. Maybe that kind of learning and spelling encouragement is why it got 73% on Metacritic, but I personally found this game to be a war of confusing attrition. Mash buttons when you're on defense and on offense, attempt to pick one of the really fun sports charts to throw the ball and not get crushed by a giant amorphous blob man. Scored a touchdown in the end, and that was it for me. Thank you very much. Ridge Racer! Remember that one? Oh boy do I, Kaz, you lovable scamp. And immediately, I'm presented with this fun little Namco arcade game, New Rally X. Apparently, it's the full version too. How nice. Ridge Racer for PSP is exactly what you'd expect from a Ridge Racer game. Visually impressive and lots of drifting sideways with a little sprinkling of a woo for good measure. The critics bloody loved it too, awarding it 88% on Metacritic. I must admit I've only really played Ridge Racer games for this series of videos, but they're so easy to understand and play that it's not long before you too can feel like a right mad Tokyo Drift lad or lass or other. God, all right, calm down. Oh yeah, and uh, apparently the course is in excellent condition. Oh uh, yeah, the course is in excellent condition. Oh uh, yeah, the course is in excellent condition. The course is in excellent Spider-Man, Spider-Man, play it while you're on the can. Do a swing, then take a swipe. Don't forget, you have to wipe. Look out! Spider-Man 2 for the PSP is obviously a port of the much-beloved PS2 Spidey highlight, and for a portable offering, it's impressively feature complete. Where'd the freak go? It may not have a truly open world, instead choosing smaller set areas, but it does have the same weird style of cutscenes from the PS2 version. The paper will write itself. That's great. The ever-delightful Bruce Campbell narrated tutorial and you well you'll be spider-man and characters who've had way more botox than should be legal you shouldn't count your explosives till they go off however it's all a bit wonky normally in these tutorial levels i'm gonna talk regardless of whether or not you press the select button enemies are comedically animated you get stuck climbing things constantly and the fail states are laughable <laughs> Unsurprising then that it achieved 67% on Metacritic, but it did manage to bag the number 19 spot on our Every Spider-Man video game ranked from worst to best list, which you should totally watch by the way. So make of that what you will. God, I'm really good at this now! Oh, no, never mind. 2004 was an edgy time, huh? Yo, dudes, break out the SPF 5000, because we're about to show these bums what it feels like to get seriously burned. And so, given the proximity of skater and jackass culture, it wasn't surprising that Tony Hawk's Underground 2 remix goes full mad stunts on your pedal bike. Featuring Bam Margera, wetting yourself jokes, and an uncomfortable sounding Tony Hawk, the game sets the stage for a globe-trotting adventure, taking you to countries far and wide to compete as part of a team against Bam's merry band of oh god I hope they're okay mentally now that they're in their 40s misfits. Given the scope of the game for the hardware it was on, it's really very impressive, boasting a more comprehensive creator skater than Project 8 on PS3 did several years later. They may look like haunted animatronics, but for the time you couldn't have really asked for much more. 83% on Metacritic. I'm not a big fan of Twisted Metal, but I wanted to do my best to avoid my personal bias getting in the way of my enjoyment. This is the best game ever! I love it! Oh god, please put me down! Ah! The problem I have with Twisted Metal head-on is its controls. It's just hard to play. 
I was constantly losing sight of enemies and because they were trying to chase me, it usually ended in us just going in blind circles trying to spot one another. The story is minimal too, although I suppose that's par for the course when it comes to a David Jaffe game about angry motorists in a world where service stations sell rocket launchers. I did enjoy the playable characters though. There's Sweet Tooth, obviously, Ghoul Rider, and this young lady appears to have stolen The Simpsons' car. 79% on Metacritic for a game where you can't even ride up the sheer side of a pyramid. Outrageous! And the award for most tedious intro ever goes to... Seriously, this goes on for minutes. Oh, one more time. Go on then. It's another Sony console launch, so it's time for another Untold Legends game. In theory, dungeon crawlers should be right at home on a portable system, but not if they're bad. As you can probably surmise from the intro cinematic, Untold Legends Brotherhood of the Blade is a very simple game. It's also incredibly zoomed in, making it hard to actually see what you're doing or what's coming your way. Hit more than one enemy with a single swing? <laughs> Not here, my dude. Just one puny spider at a time for you. Unlike its PS3 successor, there are an impressive four playable classes in this one instead of three, which is probably because you could also play it in local co-op with up to three friends via ad hoc. A mixed reception from critics with an average of 68% on Metacritic. Ultimately, you shouldn't expect much from this beyond pressing a button to hack at enemies and picking up slightly better gear from the floor. Nobody tell Diablo. Oh, Wipeout. The best series about flying tortilla chip racing there ever was. It's honestly difficult to dislike Wipeout Pure, as there will always be something inherently magical about racing around futuristic courses in very fast spaceships with a thumping EDM soundtrack. I don't really have anything particularly insightful or silly to say about it, it's just a very good game. It is worth noting, however, that Wikipedia informs me the game takes place in the year 2197, exactly 100 years after Wipeout 2097. And there's the insight you come here for. It was the latest in a long line of strong entries in the Wipeout series, but this time you got to take it with you. 88% on Metacritic, with reviewers praising the visuals and track designs. GameSpot even called the high-speed racing incredibly engaging and artistic on both a visual and technical level. It's really good, basically, and here's hoping we get another one on PS5. God, could you even imagine? Oh yeah, here we go, sports time! I've played a football game before, but I've also watched football. Oh god, my joke is ruined! Still going to give this everything I've got, though. FIFA? <laughs> Who needs it? Pez? More like blow raspberry. <laughs> oh right. It's World Tour Soccer time, and I couldn't wait to hop into the surely fully licensed sports game and see the teams for myself. Highbury, Manchester, and City? They're all real. How about a World Tournament or Euro Cup? The player names look right at least, though I can't help but wish I could see everyone basking in the beautiful sun. It's a wonderful day here with everyone basking in the beautiful sun. Oh, excellent. It's a competent enough football sim, and I even scored a mad goal and that. Booty! Had to play in challenge mode to unlock other clubs though, which was a bit weird. Not sure I like being graded on my performance as I play. You cannot stop me! Whoops, maybe it's a bit too realistic. Naughty Rooney. 70% on Metacritic. And there we have it, all of the US 2005 PSP launch lineup reviewed, sort of, in 2020. Were there any amongst them that were your favourites? Let me know in the comments below and please share this video around. Maybe consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate that. Until next time, look after yourselves. And thanks so much for watching. Bye!